Matt, congratulations on the win over to you right here. Uh, that was one of the craziest comebacks I think we've uh, ever seen in UFC history. Uh, I just give, give me your thoughts. I know you said you don't remember some of it, but uh, how are you feeling after that? I was just about to watch it back with Eve Edwards in the back there, so I would have had some better stuff for you. But, yeah, still, still not sure. Uh, I thought I won the first round, so when people are saying craziest comeback ever, I'm like, I won the first round. What are you talking about? But I guess I was stepping in potholes out there and took some clean elbows, took some clean punches. Yeah, he had me hurt. He, he had me close to out of there, but your boy's a dog. Is that, is that like a, a – do you view that as like a pretty great accolade, or is it like, man, I wish I didn't get hit to begin with? Yeah, I'd rather not take punishment. <laughs> Seems fair. Well, I will say Dana White was in here earlier, and he announced that you won $50,000 bonus. Woo! Baby. And then on top of that, he said he's not going to give you another 50, but he'll give you something pretty good on top of that. So Hey, we'll take it. Yeah. And it'll, it'll go to good use. And maybe taking that damage wasn't the worst thing. <laughs> well, still, would rather not take that damage. <laughs> I got you, man. Well, um, just uh, talk to me about what you do remember from the fight. Uh, can you walk me through the finish and, and kind of what was going through your brain? Yeah, I think uh, I felt the tides turn. He was, he was having some success. And, uh, you know, I was just, I was just kind of trying to clear the cobwebs for a lot of the second round. But it, it all changed. I, I, I kind of sat down on a straight right. His head popped back big. I think I scored a takedown there after, right to mount. And then once I got into mount, settled in, it, it kind of felt like this was the finishing sequence. And uh, hats off to him, though, because he was still able to roll me to my back, and I had to finish with the triangle, which is cool with me because I'll take another triangle finish. What am I, second all-time right now? Triangle finishes. Somebody tell Paul Craig I'm on his ass. <laughs> um, just, uh, I guess, with the year that you've had coming off a couple losses here, um, what does the win mean to you in that regard? It means everything. I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to get out here and win fights. And sometimes when things aren't going your way, you, you start kind of feeling like you don't have it anymore or something like that. But... You know, my wife, my, my team, the people around me, we, we know. We're just one performance away from being right back on top. And look at us. Here we go. You know, got, got everybody's attention now. And I'm one of these guys. I've, I've always been one of these guys, and it's good to come out and prove it. And you made your call out in the cage afterwards, so I don't have to ask who, who you're going to fight next. But I guess why? What, what was it about Mateus Nicolau that, that you like about that matchup? I think he's an excellent fighter. I think he's great. Uh, I've, I really thought that his performance against uh, Dvorak, his last performance, was masterful. And I'm trying to fight good guys. I'm, I'm not picking low-hanging fruit. I want to fight the guys that are going to get me to where I'm trying to go. So I'm not calling his name in any type of disrespect. I want to put on a good performance with him. I, I've got a lot of respect for him. And uh, th this is what the division is, the flyweight division. I know a lot of people say a lot of things, but we cooking right now. And tell me that, uh, you know, you can tell me that the flyweights aren't entertaining. You can't tell me that I'm not entertaining. I go out there every single time, and I scrap. It's who I am. And I, I don't know any better. Maybe I'll get better at fighting so I don't have to take such a whipping to get it done. But Is it wild to you that the division almost – like evaporated at one point. Were you on the flyweight roster when that happened? I sure was. I somehow survived the flyweight purge by the skin of my teeth because uh, I actually fought Naoki in a way in Singapore and uh, beat him in a split decision. And <laughs> looking back at that fight, I don't know if I beat that guy. It was it was a close one. So could have been me. Could have been me who who was uh, put on the chopping block. So I'm grateful to be here. Um, and I just want to make the most out of my opportunity. But I very much believe that. The flyweight division is still around, and it has a little something to do with me because at the time I was hot, and I went on a tear. And I'd like to think that they were like, well, we got Schnell. We got a couple guys that are exciting. Maybe we can keep this thing around. So maybe that's just wishful thinking. But I believe that I'm one of the reasons that this division is still afloat. Thanks. Talking about the, the finish, you were trying for that triangle for – a few moments there. He was still in it, still in it, still in it. Then it looked like you made some adjustment. Can you walk us through what you had to do technically to get, I mean, he napped rather than tapped, but. I, I had a good bite on it, and I've got a good triangle, and I almost got to it in the first round. We were close to snapping it on the first round. It could have been a first-round finish, but uh, he was he was good. You know, we, we knew we would have the advantage in the uh, grappling department, but I got to say, young man's been working. He's, he's over there at American Top Team where I've formerly been, it's always weird facing off and looking across the corner and seeing guys that used to coach me coaching against me. But uh, th th that's the game. So, yeah, uh, the, 
the, the, the ultimate, I, th I think what happened was I was able to turn the angle and really, really get that bite down so that he went unconscious. Hey, uh, congrats on the win. I'm Will Grant from 77 WABC over here. Thanks. Uh, so, yeah, tonight, though, a lot of the other fighters were saying that that crowd was really something else. They'd never experienced anything like that. Did that really come into play when you were trying to come back from, you know, a, a first round that you felt that you won, but a lot of people considered you losing in? Somebody, somebody scored that round for him? Or, uh, no... No, no. Uh, I was getting beat up in the second round. But second round. Second, I, sorry I won about the that. first. Did round. I say first? My bad. Yeah, yeah. Second, uh, second. No, it's all good. Uh, so something that I've tried to work on is is not uh, responding to the crowd because I am an emotional guy. I can sometimes be drawn into that. So me and my coaches, me and my team, it's something we talk about before we walk out there. Like, hey, keep you cool. Let's keep it together, and we can go out there and get this dub. Don't react to the crowd. Don't react to anything he does. Be in the moment, one step at a time. Uh, you got to have a short memory, too. I learned that from my football days. I played a little defensive back, and you get beat on one play. You can't hang your head and get beat the rest of the game. So, it's yeah, it's one of those things. I'm uh, try, trying not to feed too much into the crowd. It, it was, it's awesome to have them here. Uh, f fun, to, fun to have a big pop from them. But uh, ultimately, that's something we're trying to reel in and keep straight with ourselves. Like, I can't, you know, I was in Houston, Texas, getting booed by the crowd, my hometown. That hurt. Nothing's hurt more for me in this entire sport than getting booed in Houston, Texas. But I, I just can't, I can't buy into it because we're one moment away from getting the finish at all times. Uh, sorry, just a follow-up question. Uh, you, you seem like a real guy's guy. You described yourself before as a dog, uh, and you actually brought up that you used to play football. You got any thoughts on uh, Zach Wilson um, and what's going on with him? <laughs> or, uh... Hey, keep that dude away from my stepmom, huh? <laughs> God Thanks, man. bless, yeah. Oh, God. Matt. Right here. Dennis Bermudez. Uh, so, listen. So, I, I spoke to Yeez before the fight. And I said, hey, it's like probably like a 40-60, you know, stand up on that guy, but like an 80-20 in your favor on the ground, right? We're just going to punch this guy, take him down, sub him, right? He's like, that's the plan. So, I'm watching your fight. I'm like, this is not the plan. And then you are a wild man. You went, you know what? I can't take him down. I'm going to punch me down, and then I'm going to sub him. Is that, is that what was – was that the game plan? That was not the game plan, no. But but you did it. Yeah, it's fighting, right? And sometimes these guys uh, – I, I literally think he, he probably gassed himself out cracking me. That's the only thing that makes sense because he, he had a lot of steam. He had a lot of confidence. But as the fight wore on, after he had hurt me a couple of times, I felt like I was able to take the wind out of his sails – with, with just one small change of momentum. And that's what happens sometimes. He'll learn from it. Kid's excellent. Yeah. What a fighter. I, I look forward to seeing him more. I hope he's okay. But we took this guy seriously. We knew we would be in bad spots. We knew we would have to, you know, walk through fire to earn this one tonight. So not the game plan, but we'll take it. Figure it out. Uh, so I have, like, a funny idea for you to make, like, a highlight reel uh, of the fight to Stanky Leg. Dude. I was doing the stanky leg out. Yeah, there, huh? but then, but then you won. Yeah, we'll that's take sick. it. That's sick. Yeezus love that. That's a great idea. A little low light, then it ends well for me. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. So you were clearly rocked there. Were you on autopilot when you were going for the triangle, or do you remember going for the triangle? No. Remember? Yeah, when we got in that spot, that's my like. I've my my guard's tricky. I don't know who I told that to, but listen. You get in my guard in the first round, I'm probably going to get you. You get in my guard in the second round when you're bleeding and hurt, I'm going to get you. So it, it's a tricky spot. I don't care who you are. Black, <laughs> I came out and one of my best buds, Aaron Phillips, who, who's always around corners me, looked at me and he was like, not bad for a purple belt. <laughs> so he's right, not bad for a purple belt. But I'm a guy. I can sell black belts. I've, I've done it. So, so what's Matt, Ch Matt Chanel going to do to celebrate this victory? Hang out with you guys? Yeah, let's go get some dinner. My wife's craving a hamburger, so I think, uh, I think we get her that, and uh, y'all tell me the places to hit. Let's do it. All right, sounds like a plan. Great job. <laughs> Matt, right here, Jim Grease MMA Weekly. Did you, how do you feel about that quick turnaround? You like that, fighting two months later like that? Yeah, I think so. I think I've always, you know, if history repeats itself as it tends to do, I've always had success on turning around quickly and, and just staying busy. 
Uh, I'm, I'm my best when I'm busy. The, these layoffs and things, they've not been completely out of my control, but um, yeah, we got to reel that thing in. Try, try and stay healthy. And as I've aged and gotten older, it's, that's been the most difficult thing is staying healthy through all these camps. I mean, I came into this one dealing with a bunch of stuff, but you, you got to get out there, make the walk. If you can make a good fist, you're healthy enough. So yeah, it was good to turn around quick. Uh, I get hot when I turn around quick, so I think so. I think that's the way to do it. We keep that coming. And, and just what do you think of being an example and inspiration for so many people who might be down a little bit in life and they see you do what you just did in the octagon tonight? I mean, does that you ever think about that? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm not trying to be an inspiration of coming from rock bottom and coming all the way back, but uh, I, I think it's just a testament to my parents and the way they raised me and the way I've always competed. I've... Uh, I say these type of things all the time. I haven't had a stage to say it, but, you know, I don't come from a background of excellence. I'm, I'm a normal guy, just some trailer trash kid from northwest Louisiana. And I never knew I could win until I stood in a cage and fought a man for it. So it's, it's been something else coming full circle here. And uh, I'm proud of my work tonight. We got things to improve on. But, uh, yeah, I'm a winner. No argument for me. Congratulations, man. Thank Thanks. You. Hey, Matt, just one for me. Do you ever get worried about becoming too exciting of a fighter? Going into your next fight, obviously there's some kind of expectation now that when you come into the fight, you know, they're going to expect fireworks and come from behind. Do you ever just want to get in there and just have a relaxing, normal fight? Uh, yeah, yeah. I prefer it that way, to be perfectly honest. And I think, you know, my, my first couple UFC wins, I was able to kind of take it back, slow it down, and do that. And I think that's what makes me a difficult matchup is, am I going to come out and try and blast you? I can slow it down and pick you apart too. So uh, I don't know. Of course, it, it, the expectation thing, I, I think that's what kind of worked against me in Houston when I fought Bontarin. And, you know, everybody was coming at me for that fight not being exciting. But it takes two to tango, son. And I'm out there. I, every time I fight, it's exciting. Is it my fault when it's not? I, I'd say let's look to the other guy a little bit. And you said you're an emotional guy. You get, you know, the fans kind of impact you a little bit. Does that add pressure coming in now that, you know, the next one, whoever the name is, you don't want to, you know, psych yourself out too much going into it? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just going to have to put thought into it, speak it over with my coaches and my people, and, and put together a good game plan, try and stick to it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something to think about. Thanks. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, just back here. Um, what kind of uh, how, what does it mean to you to have someone like Eve Edwards in your corner and working with you now, like someone of such so much experience? Eve is the man, and I told him tonight. Next time we go out there, I'm a thug jitsu fighter. So how about that? Uh, Eve, what what you know? He's he's brought he's brought a lot to us. Uh, just the 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 small minor details of positions and things like that. Uh, we we work through these spots, and I've. Since working with Eve, I see improvement in my game. I've been doing this for 13 years, and sometimes you hit plateaus, and you're like, am I getting better anymore? And I've noticed a change since working with Eve and, and working through these positions. Uh, shout out to Coach Safe, too, at Fortis MMA. Those guys keep me sharp. Uh, I think Coach Safe kind of is the tactical mind behind everything, whereas Eve is a little more technical. And I also rely on Alex Chang, my kickboxing coach, to kind of reel me in. I see him every single day. We work together every single day. So I've got a good team behind me. I've always gone uh, where I saw that there was value. And I think I have a good knack for that. You know, maybe I don't always make the best decisions. I am a wild man. I tend to shoot from the hip from time to time. But when it comes to picking people to surround myself with, I've always done well with that. Thank you all.